Hello everyone. In today's video, I wanted to walk through the basics of creating a flyover camera in 3ds Max that is ready for rendering. So if you're a Civil 3D user who is fairly new at visualizations within 3ds Max, this video is for you. Now, a great majority of the content that we show online in training videos and tips and tricks videos is focused around the Civil View toolset within Max. This is a very powerful tool set available in Max that allows Civil 3D data to move seamlessly into Max so that you can perform visualizations. As you can see on the screen, I have a model. This model comes from Autodesk InfraWorks, and I've used the Civil View tools to bring over a path, which is a center line of a corridor, and then I placed and animated some cars along that path. All that was done using the Civil View tool set at the top. So what I wanted to show today was moving outside of Civil View. So when I need to place a flower camera that's not along a path, because if I just need a camera placed along a longitudinal path for like a roadway, maybe showing the driver's eye down a roadway, the Civil View tool set is all you need here too. You can just simply go to Civil View Object Placement Style, and instead of selecting a car, you can click on Camera, pick your lens type, grab the shape that you want to drive down, the surface you want to track, place your speed. You have a lot of other settings, but you can place a camera that will drive right down that path. So there's a lot of information about that online that you can watch and to learn how to do that. It's very simple. So I wanted to show some tips and tricks on the more uncontrolled camera where you have to define the positions yourself. This process is really easy as well as long as you know a few tips and tricks. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is jump to top view. And just to show you a quick tip for that, if I type in T on my keyboard, that will move me to top view instead of having to change the view here. So I'll zoom in a bit. Another little uh, trick that you're going to need to know as we go through this is under edit. There's a tool called select none because you're deselecting a lot in Macs very commonly. Control D is a shortcut, so remember Control D to deselect items. We're going to come back to that one. So let's place a camera. We're going to go to Create, Cameras, and the flower camera and typically for me is a target camera. So let's select that. Select our lens type over on the right, 35 millimeter. A lot of other settings we can set, but we're not going to worry about those now. We're going to place the position of the camera. Continue to drag the mouse and define the location of the target. In other words, what the camera is looking at. So I'm going to left click and hold and then drag for the target location in the center of my building. Done. And now I'm going to select Control D to deselect because the camera was automatically selected. Notice you don't see anything because it's placed down at the origin and this is up at elevation. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the orbit command down on the bottom right. If you don't see the orbit command, if you press and hold, you'll see all the orbit commands. I'm just picking the main orbit command, the first one. So I'm going to orbit just a bit. Now you can see the camera. It created two objects, a camera and then a target. So X, Y, we're in the right place. We just need to bring the Z elevation of the camera and target up. So we're going to select both. And before I go run the move command, I'm going to actually create a selection set because quickly selecting both of these items is going to be handy later. So I'm going to click on this button called Edit Name Selection Sets. I'm going to click Create, and we're going to call this Targ Cam Tab. And you can see the selection set contains the camera name and the target name. Now, I could have modified these names, and that's really good to do. But uh, again, just trying to show concept here. So let's test it. Let's select Control-D to deselect. And now let's click my selection set tar cam, and that worked. So now we're ready to move it. So we make sure the move command is selected. You'll see a gizmo here. We're going to grab the Z gizmo, drag, till we get up at elevation, and then release. So now I'm going to control D to deselect, and we'll zoom in. So the target's in a good spot, but really the camera elevation is going to need to go up some because of the perspective that I want to use. So I'm going to select just the camera. I'm going to grab its Z gizmo and drag it up a bit and control D to deselect. So now let's take a look and see how we're doing. So we're going to jump on that camera by going to the view control here, cameras and selecting my camera one. So that's not bad. You can see what I'm going to see the cars running through. 
maybe a little bit closer would be better, but it's not bad. So I'm gonna change this view back to perspective because when I'm in camera view, it's gonna lock me to that camera. When I'm perspective, I can orbit again. And you know what, I will do that. So I'm gonna select just the camera. I'm gonna grab the X value and move it just a bit closer. There we go, and Control D. So now we're ready to define our first position. And I'm gonna select T on the keyboard to move to top view to make these camera changes. Because my elevation, we're gonna say we're happy with that. We're just gonna basically move the camera around the target in the XY plane. So now we're ready to set positions and these are called keys. And I'll just show you the way I was taught years ago and I think this is the simplest method, especially when you're just getting started. There are some more advanced ways to do this, don't get me wrong, but I think as you're getting started, the easiest way to learn it is this way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn on key mode if I click the set key button down here, when you see this red, that means I'm in key mode. In other words, I can set camera keys. And the key to setting keys is making sure that the target and the camera are selected before you run the set key command, which you can see down here with a plus. I didn't select it, just showing you. So we're going to select our selection set, which grabs both. And now we're ready to set our first key at that original location. So I'm gonna select the plus. And you should see a little colored dot, it's a little green dot right above that frame location. So there we go. So now what I wanna do is move my, either drag it or I can key it down, down here and I want to jump to the next frame that I would like to have a camera move to. In other words, what linear path do you want this to take? So I'm gonna jump up to frame 150 where I'm at here, you can see the slider. And now I'm actually gonna to have to deselect. So I'm gonna do a control D again. There we go. And I'm gonna select just the camera. And I'm gonna wait till I see the yellow to make sure I'm the X and Y plane move. Make sure you're in the move command. And then I'm just gonna move the camera to this location. And now before I click set key, I'm going to select both again because now just the camera selected. So I pick both target and camera and I click the set key button. So you can see another little blue dot. So let's do that again. Control D, deselect, select just the camera, wait on, click the move command, wait on the big crosshair there in the XY plane, we'll go to here. Now notice this is a common mistake. I just did this on purpose. So notice I began moving the camera before I moved my slider position. Well, that's not gonna work because when I come back to this position, as soon as I move that, See how it brings me back? Because I'm in set key mode. So the next thing before I start moving that camera is I need to jump up my position. We'll go to frame 300. Now I can select control D, make sure to select the camera only. When the move command, drag it to the back. Now we do our selection set, boom. And now we set another key, great. And now the same thing, let's go to 450 frame. So it moved up. Now we're gonna control D to deselect. I'm gonna select just the camera, go to the move command at the top, wait on the cross, spin this over here. Same thing, selection set, selects both, set key, and then we'll do one more, we'll go to 600, control D, move, and we'll drag this back to the other corner here up front. Select both with my selection set and set key. Now to test this, and I could have tested as I went, but I'm just gonna jump on the camera from the view control, camera one, and you can see it leaves me at the last position. Okay, so you can see the car is moving as I'm moving. Okay, so that looks pretty nice. One thing to note is we really need to know the speed at which the camera, the frames per second that we're using as default in this scene, that would really help us predict what are good spaces between our camera keys. But to do that, just if you're interested here, 
there's a little clock button at the bottom called time configuration. If I pick this, this is where, and I need to do this up front before, so just a, just a side note, but this is where your frames per second are controlled. Notice we're at a default 25, but I could go to custom and we could use a larger frames per second. But knowing your frame per, frames per second, that would allow you to make a good guesstimation about how fast the camera's gonna move. In other words, how many frames should you move ahead for your new position so that you have the desired speed of the camera. And now that we're finished, really the last thing I need to do or the last tip would be to turn off set key mode because you don't wanna be in set key mode if you're not setting keys, it's kind of dangerous. And now my keys are set. So as long as I have a daylight system, meaning a sun and a sky, I could go right into the rendering tools and begin rendering that camera view, showing the cars moving as I orbit around the building. So the goal today was just to show the basics, just getting started with a flyover camera and 3ds Max. I hope this has been beneficial. Have a great day.